Faith is life lived in the scorn of consequences. When you think of a Southern belle during the early 20th century in Alabama, what descriptions come to mind? Female, white, wealthy, privileged, educated, socialite, aristocrat. These words accurately describe Juliet Hampton Morgan. Morgan was born in Montgomery, Alabama in 1914 into a life of white privilege, but among her white peers, she chose to challenge racism and support civil rights for all. Morgan attended the University of Alabama, graduating with honors. She worked as a librarian and director of research at the Montgomery Public Library. Unable to drive her own car due to high anxiety, Juliet rode the Montgomery City buses to work each day. On these rides, she witnessed black riders suffering humiliation at the hands of white bus drivers. These actions so angered Morgan that she pulled the bus emergency cord whenever she witnessed unfair treatment. Julia continued speaking out for the rights of African Americans by writing letters to the Montgomery Advertiser. In 1955, following Rosa Parks' arrest, Juliet wrote a letter to the newspaper supporting how the black community was conducting the bus boycott. The Negroes of Montgomery seem to have taken a lesson from Gandhi. Their own task is greater than Gandhi's, however, for they have greater prejudice to overcome. Her words resulted in threatening phone calls and letters. The mayor of Montgomery called for the library to fire Morgan. In order to keep her job, she was asked to cease writing letters to the paper. Conscience would not allow her to keep that promise, and in 1957, she wrote a letter of support to the editor of the Tuscaloosa News, who had spoken out against the White Citizens Council. She was further taunted and teased by strangers, family, friends, and even her mother called her mentally ill. In July 1957, Morgan resigned from the library. The next morning, her mother discovered Juliet had taken her own life. Juliet Hampton Morgan did not live to see her fight for equal justice realized. But in 2005, this white woman, who could no longer keep quiet in a world of whites only, was inducted into the Alabama Women's Hall of Fame and the Montgomery Public Library was named in her honor. A really brave man is the first to recognize courage in others. One of the surest signs of greatness in nations and in individuals is the ability to recognize that quality in others.